This lecture is about the, the methods for text categorization. So in this lecture, we're going to discuss how to do text categorization. Um, first, there are manual methods for text categorization. Uh, in such uh, method, uh, the idea is to determine the category based on some rules that we design carefully to reflect the domain knowledge about the categorization problem. So for example, uh, if you want to do a topic of categorization for news articles, you can say, well, if the news article mentions a word like uh, game and sports three times, then we're going to say it's about sports. Uh, things like that. And this would allow us to deterministically uh, decide which category a document should be put into. Now, such a strategy uh, would work well uh, if uh, the following um, conditions hold. First, the categories must be very well defined, and this allows a person to clearly decide uh, um, the category based on some, uh, some clear rules. Uh, secondly, the categories uh, have to be easily distinguished based on uh, surface features in text. So that means uh, superficial features like uh, keywords or, or punctuations or whatever you can easily identify in text data. Uh, for example, if uh, there is some special vocabulary that is known to only occur in a particular category, and that would be most effective because we can easily use such a vocabulary or pattern of such a vocabulary to recognize this category. Now, um, we also uh, should have sufficient knowledge uh, for designing these rules. And so if that's the case, then such a method can be effective. And so it does have applications in some um, domains and sometimes However, in general, uh, there, there are um, several problems with this approach. Uh, first, of course, it's labor intensive. It requires a lot of manual work. Obviously, we can't do this for all kinds of categorization problems. We have to do it um, from scratch for a, a different problem because different rules would be needed. So it doesn't scale up well. Now, secondly, um, it cannot handle uncertainties in rules. Uh, often the, the rules aren't 100% reliable. Uh, take for example, uh, looking at the occurrences of words in text and try to decide the topic. Uh, it's, it's actually very hard to have a 100% correct rule. So for example, you can say, well, if it has game, sports, basketball, then for sure it's about sports. But one can also imagine uh, some text articles that mention these keywords but that may not be exactly about uh, sports or only marginally touching sports. The main topic could be another topic, uh, a different uh, topic than sports. So that's one disadvantage of this approach. And, and finally, the rules may be inconsistent and this would lead to a uh, concern about robustness. More specifically, and sometimes uh, the results of categorization may be different depending on which rule to be applied. Uh, so in that case, then you will face uncertainty and you will also have to decide the order of uh, applying the rules or, or combination of uh, results that are contradictory. So all these are, are problems with uh, this approach. And it turns out that both problems can be solved or alleviated by using machine learning. So these machine learning methods are more um, automatic. But I still put automatic in quotation marks because they are not really completely automatic because they still require manual work. Uh, more specifically, we have to use human experts to uh, help in two ways. First, the human experts must annotate data sets with category labels. We we'll tell the computer which documents should receive which categories. And this is called training data. And then secondly, uh, the human experts also need to provide a set of features to represent each text object uh, that can potentially provide a clue about the category. So we need to provide some basic features for the computers to look into. And in the case of text, a natural choice would be the words. So uh, using uh, each word as a feature is a very common choice to start with. 
But of course, there are other sophisticated features like phrases or even parse which tags or, or even syntactic structures. So once human experts can provide this, then we can use machine learning to learn soft rules for categorization from the training data. So soft rules just means we, we're going to still decide which category should be assigned to a document, but it's not going to be used using a rule that, that is deterministic. So we might use something similar to saying that if it matches game sports many times, it's likely to be a sports. But we're not going to say exactly for sure, but instead we're going to use probabilities or weights so that we can combine multiple evidences. So the learning process basically is going to figure out which features are most useful for separating different categories. And it's going to also figure out how to optimally combine features to minimize errors of categorization on the training data. So the training data, as you can see here, is very important. It's the basis for learning. And then the train classifier can be applied to a new text object to predict the most likely category. And that's to simulate uh, the prediction of what a human would assign to this text object if the human were to make a judgment. So when we use uh, machine learning for text categorization, we can also talk about the, uh, a, the problem in the general setting of supervised learning. So the setup is to learn a classifier to map a value of uh, x uh, into a map of y. So here x is uh, all the text objects and y is all the categories, a set of categories. So the classifier would take any value in x um, as input and we generate a, a value in y as output. And we hope the uh, output of y would be the right uh, category for x. And here, correct, of course, is judged based on the training data. So that's a general goal, like in all the um, machine learning problems or supervised learning problems, where you are given some examples of input and output for a function, and then the computer is going to figure out the, uh, the, how the function behaves, like based on these examples, and then try to uh, be able to compute the values for future axes that we have not seen. So in general, uh, all methods uh, would rely on discriminative features of text objects to distinguish different categories. So the, that's why these features are very important and they have to be provided by uh, humans. And they will also combine multiple features in a weighted manner with weights uh, to be optimized uh, to minimize the errors on, on the training data. So ultimately, the learning process is an optimization problem and the objective function is often tied to the errors uh, on the training data. Different methods tend to vary in their ways of measuring the errors on the training data. They might optimize a different uh, objective function, which is often also called a loss function or cost function. They also tend to vary in their ways of combining the features. Uh, so a linear combination, for example, uh, is simple, is often used, uh, but they are not as powerful as nonlinear combination. But nonlinear models might be more complex for training, so there are trade offs as well. But that would lead to uh, different variations of uh, uh, many variations of these learning methods. So, in general, we can distinguish two kinds of uh, classifiers at a high level. One is called generative classifiers, the other is called discriminative classifiers. The generative classifiers uh, try to learn what the data looks like in each category. So it attempts to model the joint distribution of the data and the label X and Y. And uh, this can then be uh, factored out to uh, a product of Y, the distribution of labels, and uh, the joint probability uh, of, sorry, uh, the conditional probability of x given y, so it's y. So we first model the distribution of labels, um, and then we model how the data is generated given a particular label here. Right? Um, and once we can estimate uh, these models, then we can compute uh, this conditional probability of label given data based on the probability of data given label 
and the label distribution here by using the base rule. Now this is the most important thing because this conditional probability of the label can then be used directly to decide which label is most likely. So in such approaches, the objective function is actually like code. Right? So we model how the data are generated. So only thus it only indirectly captures the training errors. But if we can model uh, the data in each category accurately, then we can also classify accurately. One example is naive base uh, classifier in this case. The other uh, kind of approaches uh, are called discriminative classifiers. These uh, classifiers try to learn what features separate categories. So they directly tackle the problem of categorization or separation of classes. So, sorry um, for the problem. So these discriminative classifiers attempt to model the conditional probability of the label given the data point directly. And so the objective function uh, tends to directly measure the errors of categorization on the training data. Uh, some examples include the logistic regression, support vector machines, and the k-nearest neighbors. We will cover um, some of these um, classifiers in detail in the next uh, few lectures. Mm -hmm.